everybody and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Kelpie RTA. This is an RTA that was designed by Vaping with Vic and collaboration with EH Pro. This is a 25 millimeter RTA. It is a single coil and it's got like a honeycomb type of airflow. The deck is kind of unique in the way that the airflow is um, because it's similar to another one but it's made just a little bit differently. Again it is a single coil but you can actually put your coils in a different way. So I'm really really excited to show you that. So we're going to go down and I'm going to show you all about it. We'll talk about it and then we'll come back up in pros and cons. So that's the Kelpie RTA by Vaping with Vic. Okay, so here we are with the Kelpie RTA. This is a project between Vaping with Vic and EH Pro. This is the sample packaging that it comes with, so I'm not really gonna show you the packaging too much because it will be changing for the retail version. And then inside, you're gonna have the RTA. It does come with a straight glass. The straight glass does hold two mils of e-liquid, and you're also gonna get this bubble glass. The bubble glass holds 3.5 mils of e-liquid, which you know I'm gonna switch out. And then of course, you're gonna have your extra baggie right here. Extra baggies when you open it up, you're actually going to be getting some cotton. You're also going to be getting some coils and tools. So in here, you're going to get some coils and then you're going to get some tools. Now, the coils that do come with them are the Fuse Clapton's. But you see how the coil actually has the legs going either way? I want you to remember that because um, you can place the coils that way. And then there's another way that you can do it. It does come with a Barbie screwdriver as well as some O-rings and then of course your Japanese organic cotton. And then of course you've got your RTA, but you're gonna get your certificate. You're also going to get a warranty card. There you go, the warranty card and then your user manual. Now with the user manual, you do have a couple languages. There's one on that side and then there's a language on this side. Um, over here, you're actually gonna get the specifics of the tank itself. And then um, of course, all the other information on how to take it apart, how to fill it, how to wick it and things like that. So we'll go ahead and put that all aside. And then we'll take a look at the RTA. Now on the RTA, this is the Kelpie. This is sort of like a castle. Um, I think when I was watching his introduction video, he was saying that, that that logo is actually because in Scotland they have a bunch of castles and it's even got some water on the bottom side, which I think is really, really nice. It does say Kelpie here, and this is actually your indication for the top fill because it is to slide to fill. So you would just slide it like that to fill it. It does have a beautiful resin drip tip. This drip tip is absolutely gorgeous and it is 810 goon style. They did make sure to put the O-ring on the inside so you can use any of your 810 goon style drip tips or aftermarket drip tips. So I do like that. On the bottom, you do have two slits. Whatever you do to one side will happen to the other and they are fairly open. On the bottom, it is a 25 millimeter RTA. It does have your serial number here as well as designed by Vaping with Vic and then EH Pro right there. It does have a slight protruding 510. I would never recommend this on a hybrid, but that's totally up to you because it does only slightly protrude. To get into the inside, what you're gonna do is just take off the deck like this. On the inside, if you notice, it's really, really nice and domed, and the threading is machined really, really well. I really love the machining on this. I'm actually gonna take off the glass. Again, with this glass, it only holds two mils of e-liquid, which is never enough for Wendy. And then we'll get a closer look at that logo. The logo is really, really nicely engraved. It's very, very deep, and it's got some nice tolerance on the O-ring. So we'll go ahead and put the bubble glass on there. Now let's take a look at the star of the show. So this is actually the deck option that they have. It is a single coil RTA and it does have your four screws, which right there is a pro for me. I really don't like it when there's only two screws rather than four um, because you do have four different openings depending on which way your legs are. Now saying that, now if you notice the coils that they come with is so that you can put one leg on one side and one leg on the other side. Well, with this deck, they actually made it a split deck. So this side right here is actually all right here is your positive and all right here is your negative. In most decks, you have it where it's positive and negative. In this sense, it is positive and negative. The reason being is because they said, or they made it this way, so that you can actually put your coils in without messing up your legs. So if your legs do not already come how they did in the package, you can actually still put the coil in. I'm actually gonna install my coil exactly like that so I can show you, but you can do it the old way as well, which is to put one leg on this side, one leg on this side, or vice versa because it does have the four screws which i think is great now if you notice the deck is very similar to the kylan mini um i i understand that but what they did do is actually this row right here that is directly under the coils he did make those smaller they're about half the size of the other ones um he said that he did that 
but it is making it a little bit different. So it's gonna give you a little bit more um, pressure on the sides rather than from coming from the bottom so that it's gonna hit your side coils more than it will your bottom. Now on the, the channels here, the wicking channels, if you notice, there is nothing to grip it. This is kind of familiar with a couple other RTAs that have just recently come out where you actually do not have a lip to hold your cotton in. Now in this case, with this type of deck, you, we're not gonna be taking the cotton all the way down. That's really, really important. The way that this thing wicks and the space in between here and the lip that is actually, or the, the threading right here is very, very minimal. So we need the e-liquid to go up just right. So we're not gonna pack it all the way down, even thinning it out or anything like that. So I'm gonna show you how to wick it in the way that has been working the best for me. So before any ado, let's go ahead and put this on a mod. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, again, we've got this whole side is insulated. So this is gonna be your positive side and this is your negative side. So you can have your coils, both legs going on one side or you can have one here and one here. I'm actually gonna do um, both on one side and I'm gonna be using some alien coils from Coil Clout. So I'm gonna grab one of these bad boys right there. And if you notice the legs are both facing the same direction, that's okay because this deck can do it. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and unscrew this one. And I'm gonna unscrew this one. And then I'm gonna show you also, after I've unscrewed them, the differences. Now, if you notice, it does have a little bit of a ledge here. That to me, I think is really, really important. So it'll catch your legs so that your legs aren't creeping out. So I do like that. Now these are kind of bigger coils. So I'm gonna make sure that these are out just a little bit more. And then what we're gonna do is just go ahead and take our coil and we're gonna put both legs on one side. This I think is ingenious because putting the one leg on one side and one leg on the other side was always a pain in the butt for me. Um, I don't know if it, it was for you or not, but it was for me and look at how easy that was. I literally just put the coil in that easy. So I'm gonna do is just hold that right there and screw this down. There we go. And make sure that it's held in there, which it is. And then I'm just gonna hold this side and screw this one down. It's literally that easy. I have to say that this design, making it this way, um, with this design actually makes it even easier to do a single coil build than it was already before. So all you need to do now is just straighten out your coil. We're going to center it and it's that easy. Look at that. It is that easy. You've got it all on one side. I think that that is ingenious. I honestly, and I don't think that I'm gushing over Vic because I honestly don't even know him. I don't, he probably doesn't even know who I am. <laughs> so yeah, so I, it's not like I'm trying to like get kudos or anything from vaping with Vic because he doesn't really know who I am. But that's it, that, that's pretty much it. It's a perfect, perfect build the very first time. You don't have to worry about one leg pulling it that way, one leg pulling it this way. You're working with one side and I think that's awesome. And then of course, as always with these type of decks, you wanna get as close to the deck as possible and then clip them off because we don't want them to hit the inner chamber. So go ahead and clip that off. A little bit more on this one. There we go. And that's it, that, that's all we need to do. Sorry, OCD, I can't do it. Okay, so we've got that in there good. I've got it raised up a little bit. I do. I want it to where the side can also get some of the airflow as well. I'm gonna lower it just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, because I do want the side airflows to actually be able to hit the coil as well. So you can see right here, the side airflow can hit it perfectly, and we're gonna start heating this coil up. Yes, it's a new coil, and we put it down, and we're just gonna slowly pulse it and start getting this heated up. Let's go ahead and start pulsing the coil. There we go, starting to nice lighten up nicely. I'm just gonna turn it this way a little bit. Pull it out just a little bit. There we go. And always use ceramic tweezers, never use metal. I, I know that some people do use metal, but those people have actually been building for a really, really long time. Especially if you're new to building, please don't ever use metal. You can short out just about anything with metal tweezers and things like that. So don't try to do that at home. Always make sure to have some ceramic tweezers. I mean, I've been building for nearly three years and I don't ever use metal tweezers. So be careful with that. And there we go. Nicely heating up. And from the inside out, little tiny stroke right there, and there we go. So I'm gonna let that cool down, and then we're gonna wick that baby up. And for today's cotton, we're actually gonna be using the Kendo Vape Cotton Gold Edition. So let's go ahead and do that. And I just went ahead and tore off a piece. I'm just gonna zoom in here for you. 
I'm just gonna straighten it out and twist it up. This is a three millimeter coil, by the way, and it fits absolutely perfectly if it, in it, if you see. Um, I wouldn't go any bigger than a 3.5 at the maximum, but then again, it's a single coil. I think three millimeter is just perfect, in my opinion. Then again, it's up to whatever you wanna do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this through here. There we go, pull this out. Okay, twist it up just a little bit, there we go. I always like my cotton to be really nice and firm in here, not where it's moving your coil, but very, very firm because it can produce spit back if your cotton is way too loose. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna um, cut it right to where this lip is. I'm gonna cut it right here, right where that O-ring is. And then I'm gonna cut this side right where the O-ring is. My, my scissors are literally leaning on the O-ring. And I'm not gonna fluff out this cotton. Um, this time I'm just gonna make it like fluffy like this because the way that this wicks is a little bit different. Now, if you've ever watched my Monday live streams, I'm gonna tell you that pretty much a lot of RTAs are different in their wicking. Not every single RTA is the same. Now I am just gonna come out the little knot right there. That does bother me because I feel like there's a little knot, but I'm not combing it out all the way. I'm just combing out that little knot I saw there. Trim out this one a little bit and I wanna see how it lays. Now this is actually a little bit too much cotton in here. If you notice, it's going down a little bit too far, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off just a little bit more. There we go, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this side while I'm here. There we go, let's see where it lays. See, we want it to just barely touch the bottom of the deck, so it's gonna fit in there just perfectly, just like that. Now I'm just gonna fluff it up a little bit right here. Now we don't want it to thin it out too much, I'm just fluffing it out just so it'll lay in there really, really nice. Take any excess out there. And I'm gonna do the same thing this way. Fluff it up and fluff it down. For today's e-liquid, I'm actually going to be using this Toaster God. This is actually by North Shore Vapor. Really, really good stuff here. It's like a strawberry toaster strudel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put some on the coils because I do this no matter what I'm doing. I always pulse it on my coils because I want the cotton within the coil to get nice and saturated. This is when people usually get dry hits is because the fact that the cotton is still dry on the inside of the coil while everything else is nice and moist. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this just to force the inside to be saturated. And then I'm bring out just a little bit here and a little bit here, just so I can actually just shape it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there like that, put that in there like that. A little bit, that's okay. And a little bit of juice right there. There we go, and just shape it in there, you see it? Nice and shaped. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this one. Just make sure that they're in on the sides so that they don't get caught in the threading and just push it back a little bit. Now all this right there is actually gonna be going into the top, so don't worry about that. But see, there's still no cotton on the bottom. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's really, really liquidy and I put a lot of liquid on there, but there's barely any cotton there. So now what we're gonna do is just take this, squeeze it over there, and I go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, and then just tighten it down. Now I do have a little bit of leaking coming out, but that's not from the airflow, that's actually from the deck itself, from where I was actually um, getting my cotton wet. There we go, nicely put together, and then we'll go ahead and find that spot right there, push it back and fill it up. There we go. And again, I do have the bubble glass that's so gonna hold 3.5 mils of e-liquid. Close it up. So that's the Kelpie RTA. Let's go ahead and take it on top and have a vape on it. Okay, so here we are with the Kelpie RTA. Um, again, this is from Vaping with Vic and EH Pro. Before anything, I'm gonna go ahead and have a vape. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, 25 millimeter in diameter, love, love, love. I, I love anything that's 24 millimeter or above. It does have really good airflow, but it is semi-restricted. It's not like massive airflow, but it's not too restrictive either. So it's it's actually a lot more airy than most single coil RTAs. So I do like the airflow. I actually have it about fully open. Definitely, definitely get good flavor. Again, the airflow is a little bit restrictive, not on the super restrictive side, but it is restrictive. 
My biggest pro is gonna be the fact that you can do an A10 drip tip. So any of the Goon Style A10 drip tips or aftermarket A10 drip tips can fit this, which is definitely a pro. It does have the slide top fill, so it makes it a little bit easier. It comes with a straight glass and a bubble glass. Those are definitely pros for me. Um, I do wish that it held a little bit more than 3.5 mill milliliters of e-liquid, but at least it comes with a bubble glass and at least it's not two mils. So that to me is definitely a pro. <laughs> um, it does have honeycomb airflow. I'm a huge fan of honeycomb airflow. If you know me at all, you know that I just love Honeycomb Airflow. I've loved it in the Aromamizer. I loved it in the Bonza. Um, it's just, it's the way to go. It actually reduces the turbulence and makes it into a smoother vape. And that to me is really, really key. No turbulence whatsoever. Another thing that I'm going to say that is a huge pro to this is the fact that you can put your coils either one leg this way, one leg that way, or you can keep them the, the way that your coils come. That to me is really ingenious. I love how they did that split deck so that you can do it. To me, it makes it easier to build a single coil instead of having to stretch out my leg or put it on an extra, an extra wrap on my coil. I don't have to do all that. I can literally put my coil in as is. For me, in my opinion, I think that this would be good for any type of like newer builder to RTAs or somebody looking for a single coil RTA that's not been, you know, um, building for very long just for the coil placement. The coil placement to me is just super, super easy. Now about the wicking channels, the wicking channels, to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of open wicking channels. I'm really not. But I like the fact that you don't have to go all the way down. You don't have to cram in your cotton. It takes, you, you're not going to thin out your cotton, but you're not going to put it all the way down. So that's really, really key on this so that you're not going to get any dry hits and then it'll saturate just right. Being that the wicking channel is kind of thin here, you need that juice to be able to go up to soak up to your cotton or soak your cotton up to get to your coil in order to heat it up. And by leaving that little bit of space on the bottom, it does just that, it does it perfectly. There's no leaking. If you notice, there's absolutely no leaking, no leaking whatsoever. The way that I showed you, I've got bubbles coming up. It's just, it's, it's working fantastically. I don't like those wicking channels, but I think that they're kind of user friendly in the sense of you're just gonna make sure that it's within the threading. And as long as it's in that little spot, just leave it right there and you can screw down your top the top cap and you're good to go. Um, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about an extra juice flow control or anything like that. It works just fine. When you are filling it, I'm not getting any um, leaking, but I'm always, I'm, I'm so used to closing my airflow whenever I'm filling any RTAs that Sometimes I forget not to do that and I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't want to do that. You know, I don't have to. I don't necessarily have to close the airflow, but for me, I always do it because it's just habit. I've been doing that for over three years. So that to me is just habit. Whenever I have an RTA, I always close the airflow and fill it. But I haven't had any leaking when I've done it without, without closing it down. I've had no leaking. So that's never been a problem with me. Now for my cons. There's only a couple cons. The first one is going to be the slide fill. I like the fact that it has a slide fill and it makes it easy, but I prefer to have the screw off top and I'm gonna tell you why. There's no locking on the slide fill. Like when you go to slide it, there's literally no locking. There's nothing to lock it. So when I do put it in my purse, it has hit it to where it's open a little bit and that will cause leaking if it's not closed all the way. So if you're gonna put a locking to, or a slide fill like this, you have to have some sort of a locking. Whether it clicks in a place or whether you have like where you have to lift it up and then move it back, something has to be in place so that it locks. Um, because if not, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, you really gotta be careful with that. Because for me, it was just open just a tiny bit and I was like, what's going on here? It's just not right. It's because it was open just like that, just a little tiny bit. So I, I think that the tens tension on it is really, really loose. I, I, I love everything else about the RTA, but that top fill is definitely a huge con for me. I just don't like that, that type of top fill without a lock. But that's the same way that I've been with any other devices that I've had that have a top slide fill. The second one is, and it's a subjective con, like I said, wicking it is, is very easy. Wicking it's not hard, it's not, but I really like having a place to actually put my cotton in. I like having that extra rim there where I know where the cotton's gonna lay in it rather than to keep it free form. Again, that's just a subjective con. That's some. That's the way that I personally like. It's not like it's doing any damage to the RTA. The RTA wicks up just perfectly. The RTA has great airflow and tremendous flavor. Really, really good flavor. And that's because that honeycomb airflow is going all around the coil. It's getting every single spot around that coil. So I really, really like it. That's, that's pretty much... 
If you notice, I opened and closed it a hundred times and no leaking. So when you, you don't necessarily have to close that airflow. I don't want to scare any of you. That's just something that I do because I'm used to doing it. But anyway, so that's pretty much, so that's it with the Kelpie RTA. This is a Vaping with Vic and EH Pro project. Um, I think that it works just beautifully and absolutely looks beautiful on this mod. So, and it's got the gold in the drip <laughs> tip. So I had to match it up with this. So I think that it's fine. I, I do love everything about it. The only thing is, is the juice capacity. I wish it was a little bit more. Juice capacity, I feel like it should have at least been like a four mil. Um, if you're going to go from two, go to four, not two to three and a half. So four mils would have been a little bit, that's another subjective con for me. Um, I like juice capacity. I love having a lot of juice capacity. So for me, four mils would have been ideal. Um, it would have actually made it perfect. That and having a lock on here, it would have pretty much been perfect. So yeah, so that's it for my review. If you like the review, give it a thumbs up. Let me know your opinion down below on the single coil installation. Do you like the fact that you can have the post legs going, the coil legs going the same way? Or do you really like the fact of actually having them one on each side? Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next one.